everybody and welcome to a rainy edition of the Neighborhood Games of the Week. We got a great show for you though, so grab your popcorn and settle in. Over the next 15 minutes, we will take you around our neighborhoods as championships were on the line tonight. Here at Lansing Sexton, Portland in Lansing Sexton, squaring off in the CAAC White. Lansing Sexton looking for its first league championship since 2014. Meanwhile, Portland has won seven of eight, looking to make it eight of nine. This is a game that's been circled on everyone's calendar for a while now. Two unbeaten's going at it. Sexton couldn't score in its opening possession. Portland drives all the way down the field. Dominic Novara hooks up with Barrett Brennan for a three-yard touchdown. Very next possession, Caden Thielen. He's been so good all year long, bouncing off tacklers into the end zone. Portland up 14-0 early. The Raiders' defense came to play. Reese Thielen with the sack. He's fired up. That would get the ball back to the offense. Navora, the coach's son, the senior, playing so good all year long. Evan Gross coming down with it, and then right before half. Connor Thielen finding a crease and into the end zone. It was a family affair at Portland. They would go into the break up 21-0. Yeah, it was raining all night long, but that wasn't stopping this Raiders offense. Navara finds Connor Kazmir in the back of the end zone, and then capping off the night. Caden Thielen breaking tacklers and nothing but green grass in front of him. 52 yards to the house. Portland punches it in one more time. They've dominated everyone so far this year and did it again tonight. Winning big, 41 to nothing over the J-Dubs. I just thought our kids really performed well tonight. That's a, a very good football team. They're really well coached and uh, our kids executed our game plan great. They were focused all week. Had a great week of practice and, uh, you know, they drove the ball on the field right on us at the beginning and we made a play and, and, and sometimes there's a few plays that change the game and I think uh, we made a play on defense and then uh, after that we just started clicking. Another league title. You've been around for a long time. How good does this one feel? It feels really good. I mean, we knew they were going to be the toughest opponent we had on the schedule and we came out and played 100% and we're ready to go and the boys got it done. Portland is so good year after year. The Raiders move up a division to Division 4 this year for the playoffs, but that looks like a team that's destined to make a run to Ford Field. Eight league titles in nine years. That's a recipe for success. Caden Thielen was good tonight. Two rushing touchdowns as Portland goes on to win 41 to nothing. Speaking of league championships in the CAAC Blue, if teams win tonight, that would set up a de facto league championship game next week between Grand Ledge and East Lansing. That's where we find our Travis Six in East Lansing tonight. Thomas, as you can see, Mother Nature clearly got the best of us tonight, but didn't stop any football from happening. East Lansing hosting Holt. East Lansing has won five straight games, one of the hottest teams in the area, but could they make it six? Let's take a look at the highlights. We pick things up in the third quarter. East Lansing leading 35-0 over Holt as Holt is moving the ball, trying to get momentum. Then a fumble, Julius Goodwin, the senior for East Lansing, takes it back to the house to give East Lansing a commanding 42-0 lead in the third. After a quick three and out stop by the defense, East Lansing's offense is moving the ball smoothly down the field on Holt's defense. Then boom, another fumble as Holt takes it all the way back to the house for their first touchdown of the game. East Lansing will go on to win the game 42 to 7 to make it six consecutive wins. I think first of all for the seniors it's it's very very important because um, when we uh, start out the season and I'm talking about in December when we start with the winter program we address the seniors and say you know okay class of 24 um, the fall of 23 is going to be your season. Yeah, it was like them two losses put some fire in us. Like nobody was playing no games at practice. It was all it was all jokes and games at first. Everybody started to lock it in. We put it together and now we're here. Now for our next game, DeWitt going on the road to play Lansing Everett. Both these teams coming with winning records as they look to make a push towards the playoffs. DeWitt would strike first, scoring 28 points in the first quarter, take commanding four touchdown lead as Lansing Everett would come back with a few scores of their own, but they would end up falling 49-14 to as DeWitt improves to 5-2 and two on the season. Let's toss things back over to Thomas Cook for more recaps from games from around our neighborhoods. And Thomas, I hope you're surviving this rain. Thanks, Travis. We have to dry off here on the Fox 47 Neighborhood Games of the Week, but when we come back, teams are putting up points tonight in the Cascades Conference. Those highlights and more coming up next.
current temperature and time. Sponsored by Cure Auto Insurance. Neighborhood Game of the Week is sponsored. Thanks so much for being with us tonight on a rainy October night. That means football and playoff football is right around the corner. We're here at Lansing Sexton. Portland came in and won the CAAC White 41 to nothing. More undefeated teams, Addison, Napoleon playing for the Cascades Conference Championship next week. But tonight they were looking to keep their perfect records going. Colin Jankowski has all those highlights. A wet one here on Friday night, Napoleon hosting East Jackson. The Pirates looking to stay perfect on the year and move to 8-0. We pick this one up in the second half. Pirates already with a commanding lead. Grant Bradley in at QB. He takes the snap and he's going to take it himself. A huge gain running through the defense. That would set up the next play. Grant Bradley in at quarterback. He hands it off to Van Poppel who takes the reverse all the way in for the score. And that makes it 34 to zero. That one got everyone excited. Rain coming down though, and the Trojans couldn't get much going. Later in the third though, Bradley hands it off again to Aiden Booth, who powers in all the way for the score. All Pirates in this one, they take it 40 to zero. Um, you know, it just shows that our, our kids can go out and, and take care of business. Uh, we thought we talked about being laser focused all week, and uh, they came out and did that. Now to the other side of the Cascades Conference, senior night at Addison. The Panthers hosting the Spartans of Springport. Panthers driving early, first and goal. Byron Creech takes it in for the early score. Panthers would then go for two. Jackson Sword takes the snap and says, I'll do it myself. He runs it in and it's eight nothing early. The Panthers continue to dominate and roll to an 84 to 26 victory on senior night. Let's send things back to Thomas Cook for more scores around the area. Thanks, Colin. And more undefeated teams. And Mason stays perfect in Division Three. They beat Walled Lake Western. You got the first eight ranked team and the second ranked team squaring off. Mason takes care of business, 30 to seven. Hazlitt continues to inch closer to the playoffs, beating Waverly, 16 to eight. You know Nakai and Corey Amakri had big nights once again. More scores from around the area. Charlotte, they lost last week to Portland, but they bounce back in a big way, knocking off Eaton Rapids 56 to six. Portland, or excuse me, Charlotte rather, looking to be playoff bound as well. Grand Ledge and East Lansing, we know it's gonna be a big one next week for the CAC Blue. Grand Ledge had to beat Okemos tonight to stay perfect in the blue as well. They did that 49 to nothing. There's so many great things that make high school football what it is. A concession stand and food, part of that. Our Hannah Mackery had a chance to go around Lansing Sexton to get the best taste here in town. This isn't your typical concession stand food. In fact, it's not from a concession stand at all. It's from Figure Lickin' Chicken and Fish's food truck who helped keep fans here at JW Sexton fed. The macaroni and cheese, greens, red beans and rice, fried okra, cornbread, Just a few of the coke. menu items Finger Lickin' Chicken and Fish serve up at JW Sexton High School. And they've been serving up bites here in Lansing since 2014. However, they took their restaurant on the road back in 2018, which led them here, where this high school was in need of Finger Lickin' food at their football games. I know the principal, and uh, we got to talking one day, and he was like, well, we really ain't got no concession stand. How about bringing the food truck over and be our concession stand? I told him, yeah, that sounds like something we would do. It's good food and at a good cost. Owner Nick Bradley wants to make sure everybody in attendance has a smile on their face and food in hand. So I run a special for the kids every day so they can eat for $5, so they, something they can afford. And he says his comfort foods are the best option for fall football fans. It's hot and ready, it gets you warm, you know, and it's just a good feel. It's a good finger food where you can come get your food, go back, sit down, watch the game, and enjoy it. Bradley himself is a fan of the J-Dubs and supports the team from inside his trailer. And no, he doesn't always get to watch the games, but he's proud of this team nonetheless. But we ask her, because she's at the window, and we, we'll score. You know what I mean? Or if we hear the crowd go crazy, we know something happened because we're fans, so... Yeah, that food's looking really good, Hannah. Thanks so much. Each week here on the Fox 47 Neighborhood Games of the Week, we're doing a play and team of the night. Shout out to some of the best plays and teams from around the area. The play of the night took place right here at Sexton. 
and Portland's Caden Thielen. He was unstoppable all night long. Two touchdowns. This was his second one. 52 yards and put the entire defense in a spin cycle.